Monster Girl. Ah! <laughs> look at her. She's adorable. But isn't there like an age requirement for this ride? Am I wrong? This seems weird, right? Rex. I don't know. You're here. Isn't there a dick size requirement? <laughs> I was really looking forward to this new Amazon series Invincible. It just gave off a feeling that it was not going to be your typical superhero fodder and man it did not disappoint. I just got so wrapped up into it that I genuinely want to go back and read the original comic so I don't have to wait for the next episode. It just grabs you with how it presents itself. I've heard people love the comics and I got a feeling they're about to love this series I tell you now like this just has so much potential to it. I see it becoming like a major thing but at the end of the day I'm not psychic for all you know. But either way this is definitely a major series that I think has a lot of potential to it. Oh man awesome! The series is based on the Skybound slash Image comic of the same name which was created by Robert Kirkman who wrote for the Walking Dead series, Cory Walker and Ryan Otley. All three of them work on this series which basically means they have control over how this series works and can make their vision shine through. You just love to see it when the people who created the original get to work on the new adaption and actually make it the way it should be made. Like. I just appreciate that stuff, I just do, I love it, I freaking love it. The main premise for the series is about a boy whose father is the most powerful superhero in the world but he himself finds trouble living up to that legacy that precedes him when his own powers finally kick in. This show prides itself on subversion which the comic from what I've heard is basically the same. Though with this series it's made to be filled with spoilers especially after the first episode so just be weary that everything I mention is a spoiler. But I do recommend watching the series. It definitely can pique your interest especially with everything they get done. It has a unique structure to it by having each episode be 40 minutes. The great thing about it is you won't get bored watching it. Thankfully it has a good pacing to itself that keeps you engaged all the way through. So you're bound to have a good time and that's something you really gotta appreciate here. It manages to keep you interested even though it runs a lot longer than most other animated series. You know it runs like an actual normal live action series more than anything but you're still very much enthralled by the story that is going on. That's something I think they really got done very well here. This is so exciting! The characters help keep you enthralled with this show with how they are presented. Mark Grayson played by Steven Yeun who is a guy who definitely believes in doing the right thing. He gets superpowers as a teenager due to him being the son of an alien with super strength and the ability to fly and becomes the hero invincible. He has the attitude of a guy who wants to be the hero even though he's very much a rookie. But you see him and you know he'll do great things. He's got a lot to him that says this guy he's about that life. He's definitely trying to get there. It scared me. It wasn't too much. I could take the pain. I'm strong. I know you are. No, you don't! I know you think I can't do this. Hit me and let me prove you wrong. Please, Dad. Please, just hit me. Oh, son. I'm strong enough, and I can do this. It's all I ever wanted for as long as I can remember. I want to do what you do. He does have the attitude of a teenager still coming of age with how he still has to come to grips with his powers and the legacy his dad holds which helps keep you engaged in his arc. He can be awkward when talking to people which just adds some realism to him. Mark's mom Debbie Grayson played by Sandra Oh is just a normal human who does the typical mom stuff by worrying about her son and husband. Her connection with Mark comes across as genuine since she knows he's new to the game but she trusts him to be able to handle himself well. There's a teen superhero team that consists of a girl named Eve who shoots lasers from her hands and form weapons as well to enhance her abilities. A girl named Duplicate with a K who can duplicate herself. I get it. She basically just makes a bunch of clones and they usually just get killed. She doesn't really have any other powers beyond that but you know it's still kind of neat. A pretty obnoxious guy named Rexplode who creates mini bombs. Pretty awesome but he's a major bonehead and just way too full of himself. And then you got a robot named Robot. Okay. He basically just does his job as the team informant and you know he's strong, he does the robot things and all that. 
Though, I do have to say, you grow more attached to some members more than others, particularly Eve since she becomes friends with Mark. Then there's Omni-Man, Mark's dad, played by J.K. Simmons. He's the strongest hero on the planet and tries to teach his son the value of being a hero and guiding him with his powers and looking out for him. But all that means nothing when you see him go on a bloody rampage and kill a whole team of superheroes he fought alongside with. Like, it comes out of nowhere and it's graphic as hell. Now look, I'm not saying that's bad, far from it. It's actually pretty effective in setting you up to see why that happened in the first place. It's just super subversive from what you were expecting from this series. Omni-Man gives off that unsettling feeling because he comes across as a guy just living his superhero life, being a dad and husband and all that, but you just have a feeling he's gonna go berserk at any moment. These characters can play with your expectations a bit since you have no clue whether what is going to happen next or even if someone's going to die. You definitely got to keep on your toes when watching this show. You just cannot relax and think, oh yeah, nothing really is going to happen here. It's like, no, something's about to happen. Don't get me wrong. That was amazing. But also, the scariest thing I've ever seen. The world of this show plays around with the idea of the superhero genre. You got the typical stuff like having a world famous superhero team, having an all powerful hero the world loves, the hero saving the day from alien invasions, stopping some villain from destroying the world, all that jazz. But it very much flips things on its head by having the most powerful superhero go rogue pretty early on. Like, we're talking end of episode one early on. Like, ugh. It can throw some other curveballs at you by having the superheroes lose their battles more often and seeing them fail to save some people. You kids did good, Robot. Thank you, Cecil. It's an honor to assist the Global Defense Agency, though your use of the term kids might be considered condescending. What a victory? No. Do you know how many people died here yesterday? 338. 338! Damn! Now, you might be thinking, but doesn't that make them bad superheroes? I mean, yeah, but that's what makes things interesting, because you're wondering what's next, what's gonna happen next for the characters if they only barely make it out. Plus, the interactions are what help carry things along. Everyone feels like a person here. You got some people who are flawed and suck at social interactions, and others who do fine in that department. It just adds a bit of reality to things that can get you sucked in and make you think, huh, you know what, I know someone just like that. It really helps keep things grounded, especially with its sense of drama that it uses. It gets you to care about these characters by letting them have moments of just being a character and dealing with their own struggles. Plus, some of the interactions can be pretty funny. We can tear down the old power structure and build a new order! I mean, look at the costume they've got you in! Talk about pandering to gender roles! I designed my own costume, and I thought your doctorate was in seismology. Undergrad in sociology and women's studies, I had a minor in African dance. But enough politics! The animation is very much like that sharp style of DC animated movies that came out, or pretty much most of them that come out, which calls for some very epic fights. But the one thing that makes this different is, it's definitely more bloody than those DC movies. And I'm just fine with that. I mean it, they do not know the meaning of the words, hold back. Things get graphic with brain splattered, eyeballs being stepped on, bones getting crushed. They do not shy away from the heavy stuff, but it works very well here because you feel the impacts that they're going for. Gotta say bravo to the team for what they managed to accomplish, just some grade A gratuitous violence. This is an overall great series that very much keeps you on your toes. You're gonna get sucked into the story wondering why certain things are happening. The characters have a genuineness to them that makes them come across as actual people with pretty interesting dialogue and their own dilemmas. The action is just top notch with some weight to the impacts that the animation can give it. This does well to get you sucked into things and makes you want to see the next episode when it drops. Hell, it can even get you to want to just read the original comics just so you don't have to wait. It's just an all around great series. But that's just a thought. Bye.
Thank you.